So I'm fully aware that what I'm about to say may be a little bit unpopular with some people in these environmentally conscious times that we live in. However, if you're planning to visit the Netherlands this year, whether it's on holiday or on business, and you want to get out of Amsterdam, get out of the Randstad and go into the provinces to see some of the smaller cities, some of the smaller villages, some of the hidden gems in what we call Hidden Holland beyond Amsterdam, then there is no better way to do it for my money and in my experience than by hiring a car when you get here. Nonetheless, I know that for a lot of people who visit the Netherlands from outside Europe specifically, it can be a little bit daunting the idea of renting a car and then driving in the country. And in fact, we got a message last week from one of our members who is planning to visit the Netherlands this year, has always relied on public transport up until now when she's been in the Netherlands, but would like this year to do things a little bit differently she wants to do a few road trips, she wants to get out into the countryside, she wants to see some of the places that she's seen on the Dutch Way of Life. So she decided she's going to hire a car, but she was a little bit nervous about that. So she got in touch and she asked me, Bob, can you give me some advice, some tips, some suggestions on making life a little bit easier and more comfortable for me when I come to the Netherlands and rent a car? And I thought, you know what, I can give you some advice, I can give you some tips, I can give you some suggestions on renting a car and driving in the Netherlands if you're not from the country. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so the first thing that you need to remember if you're coming to the Netherlands and you want to hire a car is that you're going to need a credit card, like no mess in here. If you're from the Netherlands, no problem, you can use your debit card. But if you're coming from outside the country and you don't have a Dutch bank account, you are going to need a credit card. I've got myself in serious hot water with this before where I've landed at Eindhoven I didn't realize that I needed my credit card to take a car here got to the counter and they wouldn't take my card which was um, extremely inconvenient so that's really the first thing that you need to remember is that you will need a credit card to hire a car here in the Netherlands and secondly you'll also need enough credit on the card to be able to cover a deposit of between I'd say 300 and 900 euros now that sounds quite a lot and it was quite shocking for me when I found this out but essentially if you're coming from abroad then most rental companies will ask you, ask you for a deposit so not only do you need a credit card but you need to make sure that before you leave you've got enough money on that credit card to cover the deposit and you can find out how much the deposit will be by looking at the terms and conditions or just contacting the rental company it's a little bit sneaky because they don't make this totally clear for you when you are booking your car online whether it's through an online booking system or whether you're doing it as part of your flight booking they don't make it clear to you that you're going to need this amount of money nor do they really make it clear to you that you're going to need a credit Credit card because oftentimes you can pay with your debit card online but you need a credit card then to give the deposit so just make sure if you are coming to the Netherlands and you are going to hire a car that you bring your credit card with you and it's uh, stacked up with cash okay next tip for driving in the Netherlands is to remember the road rule of priority to the right. Here in Holland, when you are driving on a main road and you've got side roads coming from the right, most of the time these side roads have priority over you. So people coming from the right hand side of you usually have priority over you. And this is extremely important to know because it can lead to accidents and, and extreme stress if you don't take it into consideration. Now, the issue I had when I first came to the Netherlands was how do you actually know that it's priority to the right? How do you know when to yield to the person coming from that side? Basically, what I tend to suggest to people now is that when you're driving here, always assume that you give priority to the right, unless it says otherwise. Now, you can often tell when you look at the road, so you're driving along, you look at the road, there's a junction coming up, there's a there's a junction from the right here, uh, there's little white sort of triangles on the road pointing towards you, which tells you you have to yield, but they're not always there. So I recommend if you're coming and driving in the Netherlands, just remember that you normally yield to the right, unless it tells you otherwise. And the way that I handle it is as I'm driving, I slow down when I see a junction, you take a little glance to the right hand side and if nothing's coming you're all good and if something is coming then you slow down you yield and they will quickly either spin out or they will yield to you if uh, if you've got the priority so uh, just remember that it's an important tip when you're driving in the Netherlands priority to the right right so the third thing that is important to remember when you're driving here that you might not be used to with, from your own country are filter lanes so what I mean by filter lanes is this you're trundling along on the motorway 100 kilometers an hour happy as Larry in the slow lane driving to let's 
let's say Amsterdam. And then suddenly, a few moments later, you look up at the sign and you're being filtered off to the right, to an exit on the right, taking you to The Hague, right? And what happens here in the Netherlands is they use filter line lanes prolifically. They can appear at any given moment, at any given time, and filter you off to any given destination. And I've been caught out so many times by filter lanes and been late for so many meetings because I, I didn't realize I'd been filtered off. The Dutch road system loves its filter lanes. So the only reason I share this with you is because uh, it can cost you a lot of time and a lot of energy being filtered off onto one motorway that you don't actually want to be on. So my tip is when you're driving in the Netherlands, keep your eyes on the road because the, uh, the road surface will tell you which lane you need to be in, but keep your eyes on the blue signs above as well that tell you which lanes are the lanes that you need because a filter lane can appear at any moment. A normal road can turn into a filter lane and it'll filter you off and you'll end up in God knows where. So just remember, watch out for the filter lanes. Right, so the fourth thing, let's talk about turbo roundabouts. These are a Dutch phenomena. I have never seen these in any other country and what a turbo roundabout essentially is, is a standard roundabout with central reservations between the lanes. So whereas for example in Britain you drive onto a roundabout, you choose your lane, but if you miss your exit you can easily change lanes and take the exit afterwards. However here in Holland you actually get filtered into the roundabout and once you are on the lane within the roundabout you can't change lanes and you will be filtered out very quickly into the specific exit that has been designated by that lane. So again it's a little bit like the filter lane thing so just be aware when you're driving and you come coming up to a roundabout the first thing is look at the road to find out which lane you need to be in and the second thing is remember you cannot change lanes these roundabouts literally have a central res reservations that stop you moving between lanes and they are designed to filter you out and spit you out very quickly into the exit of their choice and uh, again same with the filter lane I've been caught out a lot of times by turbo roundabouts I'm not sure if that's the official name but it is in my house so uh, just be aware when you're driving in the Netherlands and you're coming up to a roundabout, make sure you get in the right lane before you hit the roundabout. And if in doubt, just take your time. And if you get spat off into the wrong exit, then of course you can just turn around and go back. Turbo roundabouts can be a little bit vexing for visitors here, so uh, watch out. The last thing that I think is important for you to remember when you are driving or renting a car here in the Netherlands is the new speed limit. As of this year, the Dutch government, based on emissions and nitrogen problems here in the country, have decided to lower the speed limit across the country on all roads to maximum 100 kilometers. Now, up until now, up until this point, the speed limit here in the Netherlands on the motorway has been a maximum of 130 kilometers. However, from, I think it's this month, I think it's March 2020, they are reducing it across the country to 100 kilometers an hour. I mean, it's cost a lot of money. It's cost a lot more money than they thought it would cost, but um, they have decided in all their wisdom this is going to be useful for the Netherlands to reduce emissions. So if you're visiting the country and you visited before and driven here, just remember the speed limit's changed. It's 100 kilometers an hour maximum on the motorway. I don't suggest you exceed that speed limit. Otherwise, you will get a friendly letter from the Dutch road authorities asking you to make a, a kindly contribution to the Dutch system, which is not something that you want to receive on your return from your lovely holiday in the Netherlands. So just remember, 100 kilometers an hour maximum, don't exceed it, or you may have to pay a significant sum. So that's that. I love driving in the Netherlands. It's a fantastic place to drive. It's very easy to rent a car. Car rental is quite cheap. You can get some really economical vehicles here. Bear in mind that petrol is a lot more expensive than diesel. So if you are going to be traveling a lot of kilometers here in the Netherlands on your trip, then I would highly recommend you go for a diesel car. It is simply not worth it. If you're doing over five or 600 kilometers, it's much more economical to buy a diesel, uh, to rent a diesel car than to rent a petrol car. Petrol is expensive, plus diesel is a lot more economical. And the other thing is that I would recommend is if you are driving here in the Netherlands doing some road trips, stay away from the roads between about 8.30 and 9.30 in the morning on weekdays and 4.30 till 6.30 on the weekdays because during that time the majority of the country is in complete gridlock during rush hour. However, outside those hours, the country is an absolute pleasure to drive in. The roads are safe, the roads are clean, well signposted, and it's a thoroughly enjoyable experience. So if you want to get out of the city, go and see Hidden Holland Beyond Amsterdam. I can't recommend it more highly to hire a car, hit the road, and go and discover the country. So thanks for watching. Those are my tips for driving and renting a car in the Netherlands. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It's been a pleasure to see you today. And until next time, look after yourself, look after each other, and don't forget, keep it Dutch.